Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Bill Yeager. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. We're so grateful to have you here today. Uh, pretty early on in the year, we're still at the beginning of the year, first quarter. And what happens most years as people decide to start this wonderful thing called transformation. Uh, they do the resolutions, they set these goals, and not too long afterward, we fall off the wagon, me included. I've done it several times, but you are an award-winning success and transformational specialist, speaker, author, fitness entrepreneur, and you're going to help people figure out the way to stay on that wagon, not get off, or if they get off, get right back on. So welcome to Savvy. Oh, thank you so much for an awesome, awesome introduction. Thank you so much for having me too and your listeners for listening. Oh my gosh, you betcha. Now, I'd love to hear what really brought you to the world of fitness. Oh, well, I struggled for a very long time. Um, I grew up in a very difficult and tra traumatizing authoritarian type of atmosphere and parenting style. Mm. And it was really, it, it was just a difficult way to live day in, day out. I was, mm. I felt like I was abused. And these mm. days, if there was a, a, a DCF to knock on the door, I think they would, <laughs> they'd be taking some people in <laughs> and, you know, it, it was just constant, constant discomfort and, and, and pain. And, and ultimately I truly just didn't feel loved. And, and whether I was loved, I, I, I don't, I don't believe I wasn't, but I just didn't feel loved. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was very difficult for somebody to go through. Mm -hmm. And I went, I, I went to comfort. Mm -hmm. And for me, as a kid, you only really have so much to access, right? And uh, it, aside from running outside or running on your bike or whatever, or trying to run it off, you go to food, you know, or at least I did. And I think a lot of people do too, you know, just to feel better. And yeah. that started the conditioning of me going to food to feel better. And I became overweight uh, to the point where it was obese and Right when I was able to grab a fake ID, I think I was 17 years old and was introduced to alcohol. I started hitting that. I was kind of a, a, a big and beefy kid, right? Being <laughs> obese, you kind of look a little older. you know. So mm -hmm. I started buying at a young age and I became just drinking my sorrows away. Mm -hmm. And what happens? You're caking it on, you're caking it on, and you just develop that, that routine and those habits that are just, that just bring you down. And what happened was somebody came along, I was 22 years old, 22 mm -hmm. years old ish. Somebody came along and inspired me and they showed me all these people, these 10 people who were able to go from some rut in their life. We all got a story. They went from some rut in their life to lifting themselves out of it and creating a completely new lifestyle of healthy eating. But what really got me where I was touched was that their entire lives changed. It wasn't just the way they looked, but it was how they felt and how that was pre presented in their business, mm -hmm. how that was presented in their relationships and how their whole their whole experience in life was completely different. And that to me was like so, so powerful. So that's what motivated me to finally get out of that place. And it was uncomfortable at first, but to get out of that place. And, and what I did was I, I literally reinvented myself in, in 12 weeks. Wow. In, 12 in, weeks. In, Just in, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's amazing. And, you know, I mean, everyone does it slightly different. I had a gal on many years ago who worked with people who often people won't get started because they'll see the end result they want. And it seems so huge that they'll do a few things and it's too hard, as you said, uncomfortable, and they just stop. And mm. she, she would work with people and say, okay, let's just do one thing. One day, mm. one thing today, nothing about tomorrow. And for one guy, it was like two liters of soda every day. We're cutting that puppy out. We're doing lemon water. That one change in a year lost 100 pounds. Just one oh, change. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Huge, huge. Yeah. And so it's amazing how um, sometimes the small things can add up. It's like when you save and you compound, compound interest, compound results. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and I believe in mm -hmm. I believe in that kind of momentum because there's got to be some kind of spark, mm -hmm. right? There's got to be that thing that comes up 
where usually, you know, people are in a, in a difficult place, right? And then they go look for something. But then instead of doing this dramatic, dramatic change, they can start by doing some of the little steps to start proving to themselves that they can do this, you know, yeah. and once you start getting that proof, like, wow, I, just this one little thing makes mm -hmm. such a huge mm -hmm. difference. Now yeah. that whole momentum starts to change. <laughs> yeah, You can go from where you are to where you want to be by taking, you can serve by certainly take the, the longer road by just taking those small little steps. So it doesn't, it doesn't make, you don't make it out to be too bigger, too much bigger in your head. Yeah, exactly. Now, when you did the 12 week transformation, what was it for you that I'm all in and I'm not going to back down? I mean, because many would just say, whoa, this is way too hard. How did you just stay that road? Mm. So for me, it was, it really had to be, it really had to be like, it, it, for me, it was a time, you know, much like I said, like I got that, I got that spark, you know, and I got that, that feeling of, I am just sick and tired of being where I was. Mm -hmm. And so I got like, I, I kind of got excited. You know, I got mm -hmm. excited when I saw other people who did it at the same time that I was struggling so much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for me by, and I, I believe in immersion. Uh, I, I think I was, I believe that I was successful because I got excited at the same time I made a decision and I took that enormous action. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I teach people when I, when I teach, when I work with clients or right here in the book, unleash your internal drive, it equals momentum. So I'll say it again, it's excitement plus decision plus enormous action creates freaking momentum. And that's why that's how people can relieve themselves from being stuck. You know, mm -hmm. because once you have that momentum, that flywheel starts spinning faster and faster and faster. You know, you're like a machine, you're unstoppable. And once somebody reads this book, you find your excitement, you know, and that motivation, much like I did. I went back to my history and I said, what worked for me? What did I have to do? I peeled it apart. I interviewed tons of people who had done it, done it too. And I put it, put it all in this book, Boom. you know, so you can have that incredible energy inside you, that sustainable energy. And it leads into the decisions and taking action you know, that are strategically placed throughout this book and including what's really cool is I have uh, a YouTube channel too, that's kind of connected this, to this book. And I, I've never seen it before in any other books, but I'm like, how, how cool would it be if I had like step-by-step -step guides that help people go through these action steps? So, you know, there's, cause a lot of people are visual learners, you know, and these action steps create momentum and momentum allows you to always make the right decision to keep moving forward so that you can change your life. I love you know, it. Oof. Right. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And you know what you brought to mind for me that I'm getting from your story is this idea that you connected with people who had succeeded and mm -hmm. who had a belief in you. I'm gathering um, because I had made a, a kind of it seems like a transformation like you made overnight in mm -hmm. the corporate world because I had a boss who saw potential in me. He said, I see the diamond in, you know, you're like a really rough stone, but I see a diamond in you, but he, he tore me down. He said, you're not acting the part. You're not being the part. You're not living up to what you can be. And this was early in my career and he just tore me down, but he wanted to just show me that you're not being who you should be. And I so admired him as a person that that night I called my friend up. I said, I've never bought a suit. We need to go to Macy's. We need to get a suit. So she went with me. We got three suits, a briefcase, and some other stuff, you know, business stuff. And I came in the next day with the business suit. And just to say, just walking in with the suit changes your way of being, how you walk in the room. Instantly that week, by the end of the week, everyone on the floor was like, did she get a promotion? Is she, is she a manager now? And I wasn't, oh, I, I wasn't, but his talk with me is very frank, but I believe in you, but tough talk. It was that motivation, but also belief that I know you can do it. Mm. Wow. That's so, so powerful. So powerful. There's uh, there's so, there's so much in that. That's, that's beautiful. You know, the yeah. fact that the power of belief is actually one of the things in my book, the, the power of getting into the state that you need to be in, in order to win that print transmits without getting too technical, like that changes your tuner, that changes your frequency. Yeah. So yeah. that's emitting in a different way. 
Yeah. And the beauty is it's coming right back to you. And I could see how a transformation like that can, can totally happen in the business world. The, the cool thing about this book is that you could use this in your relationships. I've used it in, I, in my business. Uh, like, like this isn't just a, a weight loss book, you know, there's mm -hmm. no nutrition or, or, or exercise talk at all. It's getting the, it's getting the mental strength to be able to create the armor that you need to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, let's talk uh, because I know the past two years when this got started with the craziness that's going on in the world, I was really angry. And interestingly, um, I use my emotions differently. When I was angry, I said, let's not use this negatively. How can I use this and channel this anger for good for me? So what I did, I started pumping iron, which I've never done, never liked doing. But I started going to the gym pumping iron. I was like, this is awesome. Wah, wah, wah. It's like, it helped me get my anger out, but a way to deal with it in a positive manner. Uh, so let's talk about how people can use maybe say negative emotions, but transform it into something that could be positive for themselves. That's it's such a simple, simple step too, because, and I love that you do that. And, and I just, I felt your energy across as you were explaining it when, when you were like pumping iron. <laughs> and uh, it was, it was literally one of the strategies that I used unconsciously when I did this because I wanted that way out. And I had a lot of anger and resentment towards my father, you know, so I was, I was releasing that, but you can release it literally. And I'm going to slow down here because I want people to stop and pause and really pay attention. It's literally by changing your conversation and your belief around it. That same experience you can take to empower you by simply changing the script that you're saying in your head. Yeah. Hmm. By reframing, uh, how can I use this to empower me instead of how am I going to feel sorry for myself or how am I going to make myself feel better or why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. There's those simple things. That's how you start to rewire and reprogram your brain. Mm. Bill, I, I love that you're saying that because often, you know, whatever the trial might be, maybe you found out I have a horrible disease or, you know, I, I found out my husband of 20 years has leave me or whatever it might be. Um, you could say that this is the most disastrous time in my life. How could this happen? It's horrible. But where is the gift in this, which is really hard to see at that moment when you're going through it. Um, but often when you look back and you and you pull out the gifts, like maybe it's that the past two years you've lost your job, but now you've found something that you love, you didn't even know was a passion, uh, something, a gift, a hidden gift you've forgotten about, that now you're able to put on the table and maybe make into an income um, that maybe you wouldn't have done had you been on the treadmill of just going to work every day, you know, coming home, making dinner, and you get off that treadmill, you have, as you say, that that pause that allows you to go like, what's next? That's it's, it's often the story, mm -hmm. right? And so often you talk to people and when they're emerged in that adversity or that challenge or that problem or whatever, however way you want to label it, mm -hmm. it's, we're not conditioned to think about how is that, why is this here to serve me? We're conditioned to, oh my gosh, we call up our friends and then, yeah. you know, we, we talk about it to them and, you know, everybody's feeling sorry for you, you're feeling sorry for yourself. And it's like, ah, you know, but then you talk to them two years and be like, oh yeah, you know what? You wouldn't believe that was the best thing that ever happened to me <laughs> because yeah. I found that person that I, that I married mm -hmm. or I found this or that, or like you said, you know, some, something was presented to me that wouldn't have, if that didn't happen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so getting to that state before, <laughs> while or while you're during, in this challenge, will will best serve you and, and seriously fast track you to where you want to go, whatever goal that is. Yeah, I love that. Now let's just we're we're going to come to a close very soon, but I want to leave our audience with. Let's say you started January and you made this goal, whatever it might be. Maybe it's weight loss. Maybe it's you know doing better at work. But they're already starting to see that they're mm, falling off their goals or promises to themselves. And that is kind of a really dangerous thing when you kind of don't keep your promises to yourself. What can they do mm -hmm. to really get back on track, feel that motivation again, and stick with the ongoing goal of transformation? Mm, okay. So the the best thing, you know, it's, it really comes down to, well, first of all, buy my book, Unleash Your Internal Drive. <laughs> That's the first thing that they could do. Yes. <laughs> really, but to answer your questions to best serve your listeners, is you know is to is to really honor your self commitment, you know. And I use this really cool method. Uh, I, I I designed it years ago. It's called the Jam Method. You know, it's to be, to be able to really find where you're stuck because that's what happens. You know, not being ready and able to uh, to to be able to 
uh, conquer challenges is when people start going back to their, their old patterns. So the awareness of when it was created is huge. You know, the, the first part of that. So jam means journey, attitude, and method. You got to look at your journey, which is basically your history. You know, they've got something in their history that messed them up, you know, somewhere along the lines. How was it? Was it a trauma? Was it a thing that happened? Was it patterns that came from your parents? Whatever it is, it created a subconscious behavior that's holding them back, you know, or they have some also they may have some limiting beliefs, as we talked about, or conflicting beliefs. And when that happens, people go from taking action to a complete standstill and they don't know why. You know, they start beating themselves up on it, about it. This is why the cycle of yo-yo dieting happens. Mm -hmm. You know, it destroys somebody's self-esteem over and over and over, making things worse. Yeah. You know, so you got to be able to identify what was that thing. Okay. And awareness is going to make a huge, huge difference, but then you got to assess your attitude around it. You know, mm -hmm. have they built the armor yet to be able to attack challenges when they come? So there's, it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. So when that challenge shows up, Instead of running that subconscious pattern that leads them to failure, yeah. they define failure as a, as a stopping point because they equate that pain to it and their brain does its job, right? It keeps yeah. them from the pain. Yeah. So they decide to quit. And like I said, this book shows you how to redefine your failure completely. And much like you said before, so you never get to that pain. You redefine the challenge by asking yourself, what is it? in this challenge that I can grow from. So that way you don't quit at all. You know, so you're that way you don't have to use that, that commitment because I committed this thing and to have to fight through it, you're motivated, you know, so you don't have to run that subconscious challenge behavior because that's what happens. Challenge shows up, you run that pattern, subconscious challenge beha behavior. And if you have control over it, it doesn't show up in the first place. Yeah. So that you can honor your commitments and you can stay motivated and reach your goals, even, even build your self-esteem and confidence along the way. Mm, that's amazing. Uh, everyone go out and get unleashed your inner drive, achieve your winning mindset for sustainable weight loss, fitness, and a triumph, triumphant lifestyle. Um, and you have a website, Bill Yeager's transformations.com. You can find him on Facebook, the same Bill Yeager's transformations on YouTube with wonderful YouTubes that will help you stay the course motivated and do the step-by-step -step lessons, which are helpful. If you feel like, Hey, I'm not able to stay the course. Bill can help you stay the course. I just have to thank you again, Bill Yeager for coming to share your great wisdom today on savvy broadcasting. Absolutely. Thank you again so much for having me and your listeners for listening. You betcha. Take care. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.